Totten, which is nine miles away from the city ground right now. Uh, that's the site that they're maybe thinking of uh, building a new stadium. This all comes down to ambition of uh, Nottingham Forest. They feel they need to move to a new stadium just to increase revenue and everything else and to help the team going forward in the future with that revenue of having a bigger attendance, a bigger stadium sort of to allow them to obviously bring more money in because of these new financial controls that are coming in. Um, obviously, your revenue is going to play a huge part in it going forward that you can only spend so much of, a, of your revenue every season as well. So that's what uh, Macronakis is looking at. It's obviously not very popular with uh, Nottingham Forest fans. Um, they don't want to move away from uh, their spiritual home of the city ground. Um, obviously, the fans have a real emotional attachment to the ground. Uh, they've been there for so long. I think it's 126 years now at the city ground as well. And it is one of those old traditional football stadiums in England. Um, so much history attached to his, uh, to the stadium as well that the, the fans won't want to consider leaving. They've looked at it in the past of maybe uh, increasing the capacity of the ground to around 40,000. But again, that's dragged on and nothing's really happened. So it's a question of ambition, really. Um, if Nottingham Forest want to close the gap and keep pace with the rest of their Premier League rivals, they might have to make that tough decision of leaving the city ground for a new uh, purpose-built uh, stadium with uh, increased capacity, a bit like what Everton have had to do. They've had to leave Goodison Park, I'm sure. They never really wanted to leave Goodison Park as well, where the fans obviously love that ground. But again, if Everton want to sort of boost the revenues and everything else and uh, make uh, inroads into the top six of the Premier League, they've had to make that move. And obviously we've seen the plans for Bramley Moore Dock looks very impressive all around and will really uh, enhance, I think, Everton's potential going forward as long as they remain a Premier League club. So yeah, it's a difficult decision. I don't think it's Nottingham Forest's first choice to leave the city ground, but I think needs must. Uh, and obviously Makarnakis, we know, is a very ambitious man. He's plowed a lot of money into the club already and it looks like he's... Uh, ready to plow more money in for a potential new stadium. Paul, where do you think the fans lie on this? And actually, how do you see this playing out? I mean, it's quite a similar conversation that we've had before with um, Newcastle and St. James's Park, the whole Lee versus Stay scenario. Where do you think this is going to go in the next few months and years, potentially? I think they'll end up moving stadium because of the the, 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 the revenue that the Premier League brings in, the, the PSR rules, the revenue that a big stadium would bring in. Yes, there'll be fans that push back and say they want to stay on on the, the site of the city ground. But actually, realistically, if, if you've been there, I mean, I've played there numerous times, but going there, working in the media, I mean, logistically, it's a nightmare. It's built in between a load of housing. It's built in between shops. It's built between the cricket ground. And then at the back of it is the river. So there's actually no way you can redevelop that stadium to the level that they would want to without having to, to move it. I understand the fans don't want to move the distance out of the city and there's a lot of history with the city ground. But actually to keep up with the Premier League and to keep up with the Premier League pace, I understand it. I get it. I get the history. I understand. But look at Arsenal, look at Highbury and look at where they've gone to. Look at the Emirates. I mean, the, the nostalgia the, the, and the history that Arsenal held, the marble steps and everything at, at Highbury, the clock end. You, you go back there and you look at it now there is a, 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 a touch to the club's history. There's, there's certain things from the stadium still there. Um, the, the garden in the middle of the flats, I think, is is where the pitch was. Different things. And it, it can be done in, in a way where the history of the club isn't forgotten and it isn't spoiled. You build the stadium outside of the city, fans are still going to come and support you regardless. People are going to want to see the new stadium. They're going to want to support their team in a new stadium. I understand the nostalgia. I understand the feeling. I understand the history. But the thing, the, the example I'll give you is Arsenal. Look at Highbury and look at the Emirates and look where they are now as a team. And Pete, if we move on slightly now, in a recent interview, actually, Maranak has shared his sort of disappointments on the current FFP PSR rules. What were your thoughts on, on his verdict on, on the current situation with FFP? And actually, do you think that is a shared feeling across the league with owners? Yeah, um, obviously, I can understand his frustration with it. Um, he wants to make Nottingham Forest uh, as big a club as possible. He's put his money where his mouth is. Uh, obviously, in the last couple of transfer windows, they have spent very heavily to try and improve the squad. Uh, he wants his Nottingham Forest team competing for European places uh, and competing against the best in the Premier League. So uh, I've got no issues with uh, that ambition. And I think his commitment is definitely there with the money that he has put into the club as well. Obviously, the, on the flip side of that, the 20 clubs did vote for these uh, FFP, PSR regulations in the Premier League, although probably Forrest weren't uh, members of the Premier League when they were voted through. I think they were in the Championship at the time. But 
you got to abide by these rules. They're there. Obviously, we now know that they are likely to change after next season. So there's going to be the new financial uh, regulations that clubs will have to abide by. But yeah, obviously, Makanakis, maybe, obviously, he's had uh, experiences of in Greece with Olympiakos when things were a lot different. They're the richest, most powerful club in Greece. Um, so for him to come and uh, be told uh, that you can't spend so much money, it was probably something alien to him in that respect. And uh, he wants to just uh, back his club as much as he possibly can with uh, his millions that he already has. But yeah, obviously the rules are there. You have to abide by them. Uh, I don't think anybody really agrees with them. They're not fit for purpose right now with uh, the amount of money that's uh, floating around football. You look at transfer fees these days are almost as high as the losses that you're allowed over three years with 100 and uh, whatever, 5 million uh, players are going for over that right now. So it's it's one of those. The rules are going to change from next year. But again, it looks like it's going to benefit the big boys rather than the other teams that are trying to to close the gap and compete with them. So yeah, a lot of frustration from Mark and Nakis and probably those other clubs who are outside the top six that uh, they keep finding it uh, harder and harder to close that gap. And Paul, looking at them on field, who do you think has been their player of the season? And actually, aside Morgan Gibbs-White that we've discussed, do you think there'll be any other big names that attract interest, the likes of, say, Murillo or Callum hudson Adoy? Can you see any other players potentially leaving the city ground in the summer? Well, Murillo's the one. You said it there. That's the one I was going to say. I think he's been outstanding. You look at his age. Um, I didn't realise he was so young with such little experience. Um, and you, you look what he's done and what he's achieved since, since coming into that forest side. And let's not forget, it's a Forest side that struggled this season defensively. They've shipped a lot of goals, but he stood out. He's looked like a fantastic player. They're going to get tested with res- uh, with their resolve with with bids for him. I think he's been excellent. Gibbs White, obviously, but listen, Forest are a Premier League team. These, if they're going to let these players go, they're going to have to look and recruit the the the, the, the similar similar type of player to them. So they're going to try and keep hold of these players if they want to move on. Talk about Maranakis with his with his wealth and, and wanting to put money in. I get that. Forrest have been out of the top flight for 23 years. They've got an owner who's wealthy and he wants to put his money in. He wants to develop the club and he's not been allowed to do that. So if he's not going to be allowed to bring the players in that he wants, you keep the good ones that you've got and you try and build around that. From a Forest fan's point of view, you'd be very, very disappointed to see Murillo, Gibbs, White, Hudson, Adoy, Alanga, any of that, the, the like, walk out the door in the summer. Those are the type of players that you need to build around and bring in better players around those to what you've already got. And, and that's how you're going to have to, to, to build your team because with the PSR, with the FFP, he's got the money to do it, but he can't just go and spend 200, 300 million in this window and make his start 11 stronger. What he's got to do is keep the likes of Gibbs White, Murillo, Hudson, Adoy, those type of players, and then put some meat on the bones around that slowly and build. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.